I am refusing to call this Hatsune Miku. This is Raiza or Razorlin Stout cosplaying as Miku because I don't think Miku has hips like those. Those are really thick ties. Hi and welcome back to the channel. Steven Wright here with your weekly figure news fix. Last week, I complained that there were too many new figures on pre-order, too much stuff. Well, this week, it is a lot worse. <laughs> it feels like figure companies are rushing things out. Like what we announced in the previous event, we need to put it on pre-order now, this week, because we have more stuff to announce on Wonder Festival. Yes, today, at the time of publishing of this video, it is win uh, Wonder Festival Winter 2024, which I will have a separate highlight video for that later on, a few days later, right? And to those of you celebrating Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year, yeah, happy Chinese New Year to all of you. Today is also day two of Lunar New Year. So it is coinciding with One Fest Winter, which is honestly terrible timing. And to make things worse, we have so many new figure pre-orders this week, like way too many for the week of 5th to 10th of February 2024. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let's get started, shall we? Firstly, Hobby Link Japan will go through some genuine figures, stop by Ninin Game and Ami Ami for a few exclusives, and then lastly, third parties on Oz GK. As usual, I have selected the figures I want to cover. There are a lot of genuine figures, a lot more on pre-order this week. I assume that they are rushing things out, you see. They have more stuff to announced during Wonder Festival. So the existing ones which are supposed to begin pre-order, they want to <laughs> get it sorted out first, right? On the third party side, there are way fewer than last week because yeah, we are right before Lunar New Year. I uh, mean the past one week. So companies are already starting to go on holidays actually. Their staff are starting to take leaves. So yeah, we have less third parties. The first one here, let's go with something cultured because Fate Khalid Prisma Ilya is a very cultured anime, especially season 2. Uh, okay, we have Ilya Seville von Einsburn, Bare Lake version, which is kind of a re-release because the first release, yeah, we had stockings on her. My favorite version is still the cultured ones by Amakuni, which is wearing very little bikini on. And perhaps second, fav second favorite would be the one by Kadokawa with a very similar outfit, right? Anything to piss off the SJWs, I'm all for it, man. Yeah, uh, curiously enough, until today, even though I am a big fan of uh, Fate series in general, I don't have uh, many Ilya figures yet. I only have the freeing 1x8 skill Yukata version from a bazillion years ago. Yeah, from a decade ago. The Amakuni one is so expensive, man. Maybe I'll just buy the quality reject version from China. <laughs> yeah. 27k is cheap for sure, but uh, but once again, this is a short character, right? So this is actually not a very big uh, figure. Also, with Chloe or Kuro on the right side, not yet on pre-order, which I will assume would be next week. Yeah. Next one here, yeah, I covered this briefly last week when uh, <laughs> the other girl was her name again, Kirino went on pre-order. This week, Kuro Neko or Goko Guri, which is predictable. 32,000 yen, yeah, fairly cheap for 1x4 skill. But the thing with this Goko Guri is that I am not a fan of the face of this version of Kuro Neko for some reason. It doesn't look very much like what I remember from the anime. She looks a bit more matured over here, like she has grown up by, uh, to who knows 20 plus years old. It feels that way to me. It is not the Kuroneko I know. I'm not sure if the camera lens they use to photograph this figure is part of the problem. You know, wide angle lenses, they will stretch your face. I'm not sure. But yeah, the face looks a bit different, but I would really trust the product photographers who are doing their work over here. So they must be using the correct lens for a work like this, which means the figure's face is indeed more matured looking. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like this. Yeah. However, they are meant, meant to be a pair. So if you pre-ordered Kirino, naturally you will want uh, Kuroneko over here. Will they add Ayase in, I'm not too sure yet, because it does not seem like they prepared a third character to pair with these two. These two looks like a perfect pair, and there is no space to slot in a third character in terms of how you display it, you know, composition-wise. The third one over here, okay, I wasn't sure whether to include this figure in the low-cost figure segment later on, or to bring it to the front at 1x4 scale, but in the end, I decided to bring it forward because... 
I think this figure deserves a lot of attention. Barrel Panda is at it again. 1x4 scale, very cheap figures. Uh, this is Yuna Bunny Girl illustration by Biva. I'm not sure if this is based on an artwork or even a cosplayer because I remember seeing uh, a cosplayer with her face censored cosplaying exactly the same as this character over here. I have no idea if that cosplayer is the artist behind this artwork over here, this figure over here. But yeah, uh, regardless, man, I am a big fan of this figure. Like, it does not have to be a very detailed figure at this price at 1 by 4 scale, 9,000 yen. But as long as they get the basics done right and they don't mess up the face, yeah, pre-order this one. You know, this figure, since day one she went on pre-order, which was already a few days ago, until today at the time of recording, she is number one selling figure in Ami Ami for a very good reason. This thing looks fabulous, right? At 9,000 yen. And I would tell you to go out and pre-order it. There we go. You see that whatever she's holding, a manga, uh, an art book or whatever she is holding. You see that picture over there? Yeah. That was the picture I was referring to. And that person in the picture, I have no idea if that is just uh, a generic cosplayer or, you know, uh, the artist of the character could be both as well. Some artists, they cosplay as their own characters, their own original characters, which is a really nice touch over there. Yeah. Regardless of whether you collect 1x4 scale, this is a must buy. Yeah. The best deal this week. Period. Moving on to the next one, Stronger 1x4 scale. This brand was Stronger makes excellent figures. They are like near the top. Uh, grade A or grade A minus. If you ask me to rate this figure company, right? Yeah, A to A minus, which is really good. Not many figure companies fall under this segment, you see. Uh, the thing is that they used to do mostly 1x7 scales. They do have FGO figures, actually, and I don't own a single one of it yet. They are quite rare, yeah. Uh, quite rare, but not impossible to find. Now, back to this Miku over here, which is Hatsune Miku Mai Yoneyama, the latest street style cute. Yeah, cute indeed. But is this worth almost 44,000 yen? Let me know down in the comments below. Because from the perspective of a photographer, I find this extremely photogenic. Like, I would love to photograph this figure, bring it outdoors in an urban setting in town and photograph it on the floor, you know? But this is 44k, man. Yeah. I have always loved casual style figures like this. Just that I am, yeah, I am indeed unwilling to drop 44,000 yen on something like this. But at the same time, Stronger is definitely a brand you can trust, right? Uh, they don't appear very frequently in the figure news. Like, they don't make many figures in a year. But so far, I have not come across a single bad figure from them. Yeah, not even one. So, <laughs> if you want to risk 44k on this figure, by all means, go ahead. And that is all for 1x4 skills this week. Moving on to the next one, another Hatsune Miku figure. We have three of them this week. All three are simply outstanding. That I feel bad for one of my friends going by the name of Daniel. That dude literally buys every single Miku figure in existence. And that includes Nandroid and Figma. So this week alone, over 100,000 yen of pre-orders. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this second one is also my favorite Miku figure among the three. Slightly more than the 1x4 scale earlier because I am such a sucker for details, you know. Hatsune Miku Shimian Maifu version 1x7 scale by Good Smile Company. Over 33,000 yen coming out this December, but yeah, I think it would be next year already, early next year. Now, I have always been a fan of, you know, uh, women turning around the pose. Yeah, so this body turn pose, as I call it, yeah, we are getting it in this figure, which is something I love so much. And on top of that, the color scheme on this figure is outstanding. Like, you know, when you watch movies, theatrical movies, be it in cinema or anywhere else, Hollywood movies, sometimes they the way they edit the videos, the movies you watch, right? The sky is very teal, turquoise color, not exactly blue. And then if there is a desert scene, it is very orange. We call it orange and teal color grading, right? Uh, it is actually a thing in movie production. And when you apply the same color combination to a figure, yeah, you get the same result, which is very attractive colors. Yeah, I love the colors on this one. 
Orange and Teal is very overused in video editing by many other people actually. It is way overused. But in figures, in this color combination, uh, yeah, I don't see it often. This is really attractive, man. And yeah, the, even the face, no face can be something subjective. I complain about some figure faces just because it is not my type of thing, not necessarily because it looks bad. And this one, yeah, I like it. This is not like the original Miku artwork, of course. Not what she looks like originally, but I love it, man. Yeah, 33K is rough. It is rough. And given what Hatsune Miku Symphony version, which I reviewed, turned out to be like, there were QC issues, I am feeling a bit wary about pre-ordering something like this. At the same time, if I don't, the value might go up after release, which was exactly what happened to Hatsune Miku Symphony version. Yeah, the one I reviewed, I think that one is over 40,000 yen now in Amazon Japan at least. Though, if you try harder to hunt for a deal, you might find it cheaper in Mercari, for example, right? So, should you pre-order this Hatsune Miku, I mean, if you love her so much, I would say still go ahead, right? You never know. And moving on to the third Miku figure, this one is coming out in February 2025. Okay, uh, Racing Miku version 2023, but coming out in year 25, they are way behind. <laughs> okay, uh, 25,270 yen, which is pretty pricey, yes. Uh, though at the same time, for racing versions, they usually don't retain their value as well as those really unique versions, Symphony version, and just now even that. Shimin Maifu version, I don't think that one will bin, but with Queen version, they tend to bin. The, I mean, the chances of that happening is a bit higher. I... I'm refusing to call this Hatsune Miku. This is Ryza or Razorlin Stout cosplaying as Miku because I don't think Miku has hips like those. Those are really thick ties. It is not a bad thing, not at all. Just that I feel I'm looking at Ryza dressing up as Miku and I'm all for it, right? This looks adorable. I think the previous two versions of Race, uh, Racing Miku 2022, 2023 version, I'm not a big fan of it. Can't even remember which is which anymore, so many of them. But this 2023 version, I like it, right? The 22 version, I'm not a big fan. So, regardless of whether you like this or not, should you pre-order one? Now, this is rough because I would expect it to be in after release, yeah. It is very likely you can get one for under 20,000 yen. So, if you can't afford to pre-order all three Miku figures, I would say your priorities should be the 1x4 and also the Shimin Maifu version earlier. This one is the least important among the three. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Okay, we have three Azalean figures. Uh, well, the first one, we have Formidable Bara Iro no Seiten version by Mietos. 24,500 yen coming out in November. Okay. Formidable. How do you surpass the one made by Alter? Because the Alter version is just perfection, right? Not to say this is a bad figure, it isn't. Mietos is one of the best Chinese figure brands already by now. Ah, uh, you see, whenever they make uh, sofas like this, right? This sofa is also really overdone, both in genuine figures and third party. But at least it is not gold color. They do it red and silver, and it fits this figure so well. The color scheme, I would say. Feel free to hold off your pre-order. You can decide to purchase it or not after release because, you know, uh, it is very rare for Chinese figure brands, their products to become really rare after release. It is rare for that to happen. Even the most popular figures by Apex Toys like Keqing, Lingguang, Genshin stuff, they are still easy to find, at least in China, you know. I really like this figure. Don't get me wrong. You see, the shading work on the sofa is... It is incredible, just that I don't think this is something very urgent, like you need to pre-order on day one, right? That is what I feel. The second Azalean figure, we have Dido Anxious Biscay doll version by Neon Max for 24,000 yen at 1x7 scale October release. Uh, I would prefer to call this toilet tissue dispenser version because that is really what it looks like to me. Like there are two rolls of toilet tissue, one on her right hand and the other one behind her. Yeah, I think that is just cloth, right? But really, it looks like toilet tissue to me from a distance, man. <laughs> very classy, very luxurious, and I like this a lot more than the first Azalean figure by Mietos earlier. 
you get a pair of wings over there for 24,000 yen. I mean, look at Albedo, man. Just because of wings, Japanese companies are asking for 30,000 yen and up for figure most of the time. Yeah, there are a few hovering around 27k or so, but a lot of Albedo figures are really expensive. Making this figure seem like a steal in comparison, right? I like this a lot, man. I would pre-order this if I am a, an Azalean figure collector. This is quite different from the rest. Moving on to the next one, the third one. This one is also outstanding, man. You see, Mietos is doing really good work with figures, but somehow the other two Azalean figures, at least for today's session, really outshines that one. Okay, we have Shinano Dreams of the Hazy Moon by Good Smile, 31,500 yen. Ouch. But this one going for 31k, I can see why. This is a really sophisticated figure. Hmm. This is from the previous uh, previous event. I think previous Mega Hobby Expo or something like that. Yeah, it took them long enough to put her on pre-order because they have to. One Fest is coming soon, right? Yeah, go for it. Pre-order it if you love her. This is fabulous, man. The next Azalean figure here, yeah, I mentioned there were three Azalean figures this week earlier. Make that five because I filmed a portion of today's video on Thursday itself, anticipating that I won't be able to finish my work on Friday. And I was spot on. Friday alone, this one single day is insane in terms of the number of figures that went on pre-order. So here we are, the fourth Azalean figure, Implaceable. 1x6 scale by any game for only 22,000 yen. Okay, specifically with this character, uh, <laughs> seems like I'm too early. <laughs> HLJ only uploaded two pictures for now. Yeah, I'm filming this very early, lunchtime at the moment. Uh, specifically for this character over here, a lot of third parties have made very expensive 1x4 skills. Like they are amazing. They are like $600 as well. But if you want something a bit more reasonable, something priced for normal human beings, then this is the one to go for. I mean, the pose is on the simple side. It is on the plain side. But still, I like it a lot. I mean, there is nothing much to dislike about this figure when the pricing is so low, 22 k for a 1x6 skill, right? And the game is a Chinese figure brand that has been doing quite a number of 1x6 scale Azalean figures. Their figures are on the simple side in terms of the pose, but at least they are relatively affordable, right? And the fifth Azalean figure, okay, uh, we have Honolulu Present Fire Red version Manju Mischief by Weibo's Chinese brand again. 1x6 scale for almost 25,000 yen coming out this October. Okay, so this is more of a, yeah, I think this is Christmas theme, right? Given that she is wrapped up in ribbons. It is not immediately obvious, but if this comes out before December, yeah, this would be a great Christmas figure to have. Among the five Azulian figures covered today, I think this one is actually my least favorite. <laughs> not to say the figure is bad, because Weibo's is one of the better figure brands from China itself. Just that if I had to choose, yeah, I mean, I can't pre-order all five I had to choose carefully, then this one wouldn't make the cut for me, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. Christmas theme. <laughs> At least this one doesn't get released on 25th December, you know, like some Japanese brands do. Oh, moving on to the next one, okay, uh, there are two different color versions of this figure. An office lady who doesn't want to work at a company with a surprisingly flexible body. <laughs> Interesting title indeed. Magi Arts is a relatively new brand. I think I just started seeing their names last year. This is the deluxe version including a wall scroll and if you're not interested in that, there's a cheaper version for 17,000 yen. And you get to choose between a uh, pink, pink magenta shirt or even a white shirt over here. Which color version is better? Magenta pink or white? What do you think? Yeah, white color is the classic look, like a typical office outfit. But in this case, given how common uh, yeah, uh, office outwear is in anime figures, I would go for this magenta pink color just for the sake of you know, differentiation if I have other office lady figures in my collection. Yeah, I love this so much. Like, Since when have I seen an office lady doing a stretching like this in office? I mean, as an anime figure, of course, no. I don't think I've seen any. This is something new. Uh, leg stretching poses are nothing new, right? Don't get me wrong. But in an office outfit, now that is the first time I'm seeing this, right? 
And for those of you Figma, SH, Figo Arts collectors, or even Dolphy collectors, hey, hey, your figures won't be able to pull out a pose like this. <laughs> the joints are not that flexible. Mm. Go for it. Even the 17,000 yen one, go for it. This is great, man. I like this a lot. Moving on to the next one, we have Union Creative 1x6 skill, Gun El Shi, Jewel Wea from To Love Go Darkness. I never knew what her full name was, now I know. Yeah, this, <laughs> I am today years old when I find out her name is Gun El Shi Jewel Wea. All the while, I only know her name as Gun, right? A supporting uh, character in To Love Go. And originally, she is kind of a, you know, <laughs> LGBT character. She can change between male and female form. But later on, I think around season 3, Darkness. Yeah, in Darkness itself, she split from a brother. And they are now two separate <laughs> human beings or rather alien beings, right? Okay, uh, I'm not going to scroll through the pictures because, yeah, the rear view is excellent over here. Go and check out the pictures yourself. And this character specifically for To Love Go, there are not many figures of her. Are there even any other skill figures of her? I can't remember, man. Yeah. Uh, normally, I would not recommend any To Love Go collectors to go for Union Creative because, you know, there are other brands making better figures of To Love Go characters. But you can't deny the fact that Union Creative is the one really going all out. Yeah, they go all out on this series. Even the less important characters, the side characters that Almost no one cares about the make figures of them. I mean, the adult version of Yami, what was her name again? I think Tiryu, right? Tiryu. And also a number of other characters, insert characters, they make everything, the figures. And for that reason alone, I don't want to discourage anyone from buying Union Creatives uh, to love real figures. Yeah, go for it because there are barely any other options for this specific character. Moving on to the next one over here, we have a 1x7 scale Bunny Girl Rina by Enso Toys, 18,000 yen only. Mm. Now this is a nice display piece, like you can totally display this figure next to, who knows, maybe a globe <laughs> on your bookshelf, you know? Yeah, this is very nice. Mm. The reason why this figure is cheap is quite obvious, like this is a very simple figure. It is a bunny figure with a unique pose. That base over there doesn't take much to manufacture, doesn't cost too much. I mean, how much does it cost you to buy a globe model from a stationery store to display it in your room, your bookshelf? Yeah, I think you can get one for $15. Yeah, doesn't cost too much. So this one, 18,000 yen is plenty reasonable. For Enso Toys, I believe it is also a Chinese figure brand. I believe. I need to find out more, right? I've seen this name a few times already. Moving on. Moving on to the next one, okay, we have a pair of bunny girl figures again. This is SSR figure Yi Wen Guan, House of Unhumans, really, bunny version by Infinity Studio, 10,800 yen only. And the other one over here, okay, uh, her name is Su Jiu, and you can display both of them together. This is amazing, man. They go so well together on this couch, on this sofa, so almost 22,000 yen for a pair, only 11k each. This is excellent value by all means. Now, who is Infinity Studio? It is actually Prime 1 Studios budget figure division, right? Yeah, budget skill figure. This is a good buy. It doesn't matter if the figure's detail level is average. I mean, 11k each, <laughs> get this entire package. Man, this is great purchase indeed. Moving on to the next one. Okay, this figure, I remember this one very well. Uh, Nippon Columbia, right? Uh, they come up with this long title. Uh, and they even mentioned the word with Nip Sleep Gaming System. That was hilarious. And I speculated back then that this figure is having a modular base. You are getting four figures, right? Because back then, two weeks ago, this was what I said. Oh, wait. Hold on, hold on. I think there are three more figures with a similar base and then they connect and make a circle around with four bunny girls. Judging by the modular design of the base. I mean you look at the you look at the bottom corner of the base over there. You see, there is a gap over there for you to plug something else in. And I am spot on on this one because now we have this new picture over here. Yes, four figures in one set. Look at that. Oh, I love it when my prediction comes true, man. So there you go, uh, only one on pre-order at the moment. I believe I covered this figure on Ami Ami back then. This is just a small update. Now we know there are four figures as predicted. Very cool, but I'm sorry Nippon Columbia. I mean, I don't think I'll be buying this one. Yeah, uh, moving on to the next one. Another cheap, 
albedo figure. Mint Fuyu has pushed out so many ultra expensive albedo figures, so it is great to see a price coming down because there is so much competition. This is my good smile, Nagli Gi version, only 21,000 yen, and I would say go for it, right? I think last week we had Animaster masquerading as Kadokawa, uh, pushing out a 23,000 yen albedo figure, which I said was really cheap, and now Good Smile is coming up with one which is even slightly cheaper. Normally, I'm not always a big fan of pure fan service anime figures, but for this albedo, yeah, colors are on the lacking side. I mean, the whole thing is just black color, but at the same time, 21,000 yen, those huge giant wings that has a lot of shading paintwork on it, yeah, go for it. This is a good buy. I told you guys earlier, this week you guys are screwed, <laughs> regardless of what you collect, right? But yeah, Miku and Azulen collectors have it worst. <laughs> Next one over here, one by 7 skill needy streamer overload. Oh my god, <laughs> Kawaii Angel by Fuyu, 18,000 yen. I have no idea how popular this streamer or VTuber is, but yeah, I've noted how many figures of her has been made so far, price figures, I think, uh, pop up rate as well, and then there are other brands who made this figure. Now, Furio as well. Maybe she is a lot more popular than I believe because I don't pay attention to VTubers in general. Oh. Yeah, and character design wise, she looks fine, but <laughs> not my kind of thing over here. Moving on to the next one from Blue Archive, we have a 1x7 skill Hasumi track outfit from Furio 22,000 yen, November release. You just have to love how figure prices are actually coming down <laughs> in the past few months, man. Except for FGO. It is terrible for us FGO collectors. We will talk about that later. Okay. Character design-wise, I am not a big fan of this character, mainly for the body proportions. If you watch my videos a lot, you already know I'm not a big fan of G cups, J cups, size chest over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a very skinny person, but for the bust size to be this big, it looks a bit weird. I know women like this do exist. I know a few in person in myself, right? But I'm not a big fan of it. It looks a bit off. But specifically for full wheel, right? I know I am not trying to expect any miracles over here. As long the figure turns out to be decent, like not, not way off from what was being advertised over here, then I would say it is still a good buy. The thing is that the sculpting and paint work of Furio figures, they often appear underwhelming in the final products compared to what they show us in these product pictures. So be careful if you are interested in this figure. At least I am certain there are no shading on the wings over there, right? Uh, look, look at the wings over here. It is like plain dark grey. And you compare it to Albedo earlier, uh, yeah. We can see all these lighter and darker shades on the paintwork. Good Smile and the same price points is doing a far better job at painting the anime figures compared to Furio, which is giving you plain grey. Normally, I would expect to see some gradient paintwork on the figure. Yes, one can argue that maybe the original artwork looks like this. There is barely any shading on the original 2D artwork, but I want to see the figure, the, the actual figure being enhanced in a way uh, to make it look better than the 2D artwork. Yeah. Okay, and then moving on to the next one from Full View, we have an amazing looking Ark Knights figure, only that I don't trust this brand very much. Uh, Dusk, everything is a miracle version. <laughs> okay, December release by Full View, 27,000 yen. 27,000 yen is on the high side, but I wouldn't call this overpriced because that is a really nice base and all those extra stuff going around the figure, yeah. I think the price is justified, at least for Japanese brand, but I just couldn't trust Full View at the moment. Yeah, they are very inconsistent. Man, look at all these details, man. These are the kind of things I love in figures in general. <laughs> there is something for everyone this week. See, Azalean fans, Ark Knight fans, we have FGO later on as well, only one figure. And Miku and so on, yeah. All the big titles, man. <sighs> Maybe wait until after release. Look for user pictures before deciding whether to buy one or not. If this was made by someone else, even Kotobukiya, I think this would have been a very easy recommendation, but I don't think Kotobukiya is making any Arknight figures at the moment. 
Moving on to the next one by Mietos again, we have Spirit Blossom Ahui from League of Legends. Now, for LOL collectors, this is a must-have. There are not many high-quality LOL figures out there. Mietos and Apex are the ones making most of them. This one, 24,500 yen, which is very similar to that uh, Shinano figure by, uh, by Good Smile earlier. Yeah, but a lot cheaper, as you can see. Like This is kind of like a 90 Fox. Wait, is that LED? Oh, if this comes with LED, man, this would be an amazing purchase. I think I think the answer is a yes. I need to confirm the details down here. Uh, as usual, HLJ doesn't mention anything in the item description. Hmm. You see, uh, Good Smile chose to paint and do gradient shading on that Shinano figure earlier on the tails, right? The shading work was outstanding. This is translucent material, transparent material, which also looks amazing in its own way, right? I can't even say which one I prefer because both of them are unique in their own way. I think, yes, the tail has LED in it, right? If not, why would they bother to give us two exact same pictures, one with the tails lighted up, one without, right? They are LEDs. This is an amazing buy. Moving on to the next one, okay, from Apex Toys, we have Siami Fortunate to meet China dress, whatever that means. Okay, uh, this is a set of two black and white dress for 35,000 yen, or you can buy it separately for about 18,000 yen each, right? Normally, I always recommend you guys to buy both to complete the set, but for this one, it is hard to recommend you to buy both because they are exactly the same figure without the same color scheme. That is all, see? I think Apex Toys should have made it uh, facing each other. Like, you know, uh, one girl is facing the right side and then the other girl is facing the left side. So when you display them, it is like they are facing each other, a mirror image. Yeah, they are exactly the same figure, just that they are facing the opposite direction. That would have been enough. Uh, for me to convince you to buy both, right? But now with two exactly the same figures facing the same direction like this, buying both is a bit weird. Yeah, it feels like uh, buying a variation, you know, Orchid Seed and some edgy figure companies, they make a figure in this color and then a year or two years later, they will release a 2P color version, second player color version, like you play arcade fighting games. The each character you choose, there are at least two different outfit colors, right? Similar uh, concepts over here. That is the way I see it. So it is a bit weird to buy both, even though they are not exactly the same. The black one does not wear any glasses on the eyes, and then the white one is wearing glasses, right? Uh, where is the white version? Man, so many pictures. This is the white one. There you go. Yeah. So the white one has glasses. Personally, I prefer it a hole without glasses. Not to say it looks bad on this one. Now, between white and black, which one do you think looks nicer? I have a tendency to prefer black, right? I used to own Alta's Kasugano Sora uh, figure, China dress figure, and I also went for the black version. That is just my preference, by the way. Alright, so moving on to the next one by Apex Toys as well. Fushigi no Muyutan, Yume Iri no Jikan, Alice Liddell. 22,000 yen coming out January next year, right? A year away. Okay. I think this is Alice in Wonderland, right? Like a different concept art. Yeah, very nice. Last week, we had an Alice in Wonderland figure as well, but I like this one a lot more. Yeah. Just that for me, I mean, a levitating figure, a floating figure like this, it is a bit difficult for me to photograph in a diorama. Problems figure photographers face, you see. 22k is really cheap, given that there are so many things going on in the figure, man. Moving on to the next one, one by six skill apprentice Nurse Ai Sukuyomi by BB Buttons. Never heard of this brand. Could be a Chinese brand, could be, right? Uh, I'm not sure at this point. Okay, 17,000 yen only coming out in October. Now, this is the kind of nurse you should never hire to work in your clinic or hospital because your blood bank would be empty within days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously a vampire which, I, what, which is what I'm suspecting over here and she is drinking a very small blood bag over there is that enough for you girl? oh that is a nice photo 
Very nice figure. I like the character design a lot, this one. And this is quite cheap. Unfortunately, it is not cast off a ball. Hmm. Oh. You're getting this bonus item, which is adorable, man. Yeah, a brand you have never heard of. I have never heard of as well, but nowadays, I mean, bad figure brands are really hard to come by. I don't think you have to overthink too much if you want this figure. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, we have two versions. This is the deluxe version with a wall scroll. A rabbit girl illustration by Gen, Gen Grandia. Okay, this is by Hobby Sakura. Chinese figure brand. Uh, this is Hatsune Miku, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I'm looking at another version of Miku. Mm. If you are not interested in the world scroll, you can get her for 18,000 yen, right? The regular version right here, 18k. This would be what I want compared to the world scroll, which I normally don't collect. Yeah, Hobby Sakura also makes really solid figures. Like, their quality is decent as well. Not to mention, their character designs are quite nice. This is not my favorite. I don't like this character design as much, but they have other characters which I really like. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. What do we have over here? Ah, Bell Find 1 by 7 skill Suzu Kanade from Ayakashi. Uh, triangle. This is Shrine Maiden version. That is not even a shrine outfit, right? <laughs> okay, 21,000 yen coming out in July, which is really fast. Mm. You know, the my favorite thing about Ayakashi's triangle is actually that cat over there. That thing is like some demon, some god tier demon. Or, that is what I understand. I actually watched the anime, but I was quite disappointed by it, you see. Like, the amount of fan service is nowhere near To Love Go. To Love Go is a legend. And yeah, the same author, uh, he did, uh, what do you call this? Ayakashi Triangle, but yeah, I wasn't happy with the anime adaptation. It was entertaining, but that is about it. Bell Fine, yeah, they, they used to be a below average figure company. They, they were like C plus to me, C or B minus to me. That is what I used to rate them in the past. But that is also based on my experience with them seven years ago, six years ago. So my opinion on this brand could be inaccurate today because everyone improves over time, you see? Yeah, if you don't improve, you can't uh, compete with better brands and eventually you'll just go bankrupt, which is like what happens to Griffin Enterprises. Yeah, you can't afford not to improve, right? Yeah, so I think the best way to judge this brand is to search in myfigurecollection.net like you go for the figures released by Bellfine in the past 12 months yeah you narrow it down and then you go for the user pictures and see for yourself whether you, you think it is okay or not right moving on to the next one original character 1x6 skill bunny elf princess illustration by Ryoshi Tajima by gentleman 27,000 yen April release, and that, that is next year, by the way, April 2025, more than a year of waiting. This is supposedly an 18 plus figure. At least that is what HLJ uh, listed this figure as, but I am not seeing any casted off pictures being included. So I'm not sure if you were to ask me, is this castable? Maybe it is. Uh, but to me, that is not an important criteria to purchase a figure, right? It is a nice thing to have. That is about it. However, I don't like the face of this character. Personal taste. Not to say it is bad, but personal taste. Oh yes, there is a cast off picture over here. Basically, the two pieces covering her opai, you can remove it. That is about it, I think. Down there, I'm not too sure, but doesn't look like you can remove it. So this is just a really small cast off feature. 27k for 1x6 skill is okay, right? Not too expensive, not cheap either. Okay, moving on to the next one. Ah, Tony Taka artwork, very recognizable. It is like uh, every single girl designed by this artist have the same exact face, but everything else is different. So it feels like the same person cosplaying 200, 300 different characters, right? The face is very recognizable. <laughs> So this is 1x6 skill Death Ball Nadeshiko Original Illustration. Okay, 26,000 yen at 1x6 skill by Daiki Kogyo. Uh, not cheap, not too expensive either. I would love this to be at 23 or 24k, right? Uh, what is this outfit actually? Is this cheerleader outfit? Uh, there is one photo over here. 
yeah, uh, this does appear to be a cheerleader outfit. Very nice. Daiki Kogyo is a B tier company, average company. Sometimes they have their occasional QC issues with the paintwork and their cast off mechanism. They are very old school with the cast off mechanism. So expect seam lines on the set of the figure and then you need to, you know, peel off the outfit. It is. <laughs> I think that kind of mechanism shouldn't be a thing nowadays because you get very ugly seam lines. Uh, as for the figure itself, I like the character design a lot. And even though Daiki figures are kind of, you know, average, some of them to in do increase in price after release. For this one, I'm not sure how to predict because Tony Taka art is very popular. So if you were to tell me this one will go up in value after release, a few months after release, I won't be too surprised. Moving on to the next one, we have two or three re-releases and these are really cheap figures. Firstly, we have Makise Kuisu 1x8 skill by Kotobukiya. This came out twice already. This is like a third re-release for only 9,400 yen in Hobby Link Japan. Though at the same time, this is one of the worst looking Makise Kuisu figures. If I have to be honest, I'm sorry to the owners of this figure. But by now, by today in year 2024, this is one of the worst looking figures of her. Not to say that this is a bad figure, it is not, right? Just that there are so many other better figures of Makise Kuisu. I mean, Wave Corporation has a better one. <laughs> Good Smile has better ones as well, wedding version. The computer ones and I think 7 or 8 years ago, the lab coat version. They are all better than Kotobukiya's version, you see. But at the same time, Kotobukiya was the first figure brand back then to make a figure of Makise Kuisu. Yeah, this was the very first figure of her. So it is no surprise that it is the least impressive among all of them, right? 9,400 yen. Uh, this is tough because normally I would, uh, I would advise you guys to save up longer and go for better figures of your favorite anime character rather than to buy a half-assed version and then regret it later. Yeah. Unless you are just a Makise Kuisu collector, you want every figure of her and you don't have this one, then by all means, go ahead and pre-order one. This is very cheap. This is so cheap, man. Okay, the second we release over here, this is also a very old figure of <laughs> Holo from Spice and Wolf and also one of the least impressive ones, right? Uh, there are other brands that make better figures of Holo. Similar situation to Makise Kuisu, but you can get this for 8,500 yen. So this is up to you to, de to decide whether you are going for <laughs> Uh, you want to go for something better or you just want a cheap figure because you can't afford too expensive stuff, right? Yeah, everyone have their own preferences. 8,500 yen for Kotobukiya figure. Try to think about that for a second, man. In year 2024. <laughs> or you can look at it this way. Assume that this is a pop-up rate L figure, which is about 7,500 yen. If you look at it this way, then perhaps this is not that bad of a purchase. Yeah, it is all a matter of your own personal perspective. Moving on to the next figure, we are now getting into the low-cost figure territory. This one over here, Matsuno Nova 2 by Mengxiang Toys, I covered this last week. So just a quick mention over here, I won't go over the figure again. She is now available on HLJ in case this is a preferred site of purchase for figures. Okay, now the first low cost figure for this week, uh, 1 by 10 skill gift plus, which is a low cost figure line by Mietos. Uh, Chinese Pladin, Sword and Fairy, and I am not reading that. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> okay, um, by Mietos, 4,800 yen coming out in September. If you were to ask me, will this be better than pop up rate? I would say I'm quite certain it will be in the quality control and painting department, right? Okay, just that Chinese Pladin must be a manhua, right? Or Chinese game, MMORPG, I don't know, but it does seem that uh, that way to me. Like it sounds like a Chinese MMORPG title to me. Yeah. I'm not paying attention to Chinese anime, you know, like. Sometimes I see these uh, Chinese theme anime titles appearing in Torrent websites. Yeah, I'm a big pirate. <laughs> uh, ethical pirate. I don't share the stuff I torrent. I keep it for myself, right? I don't distribute pirate stuff. Uh, anyways, I see a lot of these Chinese anime stuff, but I never tried watching any one of them. Maybe I should give it a try. I'm not too sure. And the second character over here, this is... So textbook Chinese, man. Like the character design. Uh, when they do Twin Tail, 
guaranteed there will be balls like they will tie the, their hair with two balls on top <laughs> this is so Chinese okay uh, from the same series as well 4,800 yen I like this one a bit more in character design yeah I have always been a big fan of twin tails <laughs> man who doesn't like Ivy from GG, man <laughs> okay uh, yeah this is a really pretty face for 5,000 yen yeah, go for it if you know something about Chinese Paladin. Moving on to the next one, we have a pair of Tenital figures, Ram and Ram. Wait, this went on pre-order last week, right? On Ninin Game at least? Yeah, I covered it already. Uh, 5,500 yen each or 11,000 yen for a set. Yes, I covered this already. Uh, last week, you can only find this in Ninin Game. Now, she is. they are both on Ami Ami and HLJ. So, I'm not going to repeat things again. Yeah, as usual. They need to stop with this Ram and Gram spamming, man. Too many figures. Yep, 5,500 yen for each. You are not getting any discounts for buying a set, but why would they give you discounts? Because they already know you need both, right? Most people will buy both. It feels incomplete buying only either one. Moving on to the next one from Heaven Burns. We have Tenital Yuina Shirakawa for 6,200 yen. Okay. Uh, this game, Heaven Burns Red, I think there were already two or three figures uh, out there. One already released. This is at least the fourth one, I think. And one thing I find really weird about the view is that they gave a 40,000 yen Hestia figure and a really ugly white disc base. And something this cheap, they're gi giving her a better base, man. I love bases like this. Like It is compact, it is small, it doesn't take up much space, yet it is very nice to look at. And I think bases like this should be standard across more figure brands, right? We should really be calling out figure companies for giving us ugly, cheap bases, very plastic, when they charge us so much for anime figures. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, Tenital again, Hatsune Miku. Okay, so this is the fourth Miku figure. Uh, Neo Tokyo series kimono. 5,400 yen. Uh, yeah. For those of you who collect low-cost figures and even more so you love Miku, this is pretty, right? I don't see myself buying something like this, but hmm, that is a ton of detail on a 5,000 yen figure. I mean, look at the uh, decal work. Should be decal and think. Decal work on the ribbon over there. This is outstanding. I mean, once again, I just don't get full wheel. They do a crap work on some of their expensive skill figures and then they are doing a great job with their lower cost ones. What is happening, man? <sighs> that base over there looks like a burnt mooncake to me. <laughs> if there is one thing I don't like, yeah, give her a better base. Moving on to the next one over here. Okay, uh, this is Pop Upgrade Sister, one of Misaka Mikoto's clones, right? And I feel like her clone army is a bit too underappreciated. She should have gotten more figures way sooner. Furio has made a skill figure of her, I think in a medical outfit, something like that, right? Um, doctor outfit, medical outfit for 18,000 yen or so. That one was really nice and I recommended Misaka Mikoto fans to get that figure even though it was by Furio because really, you don't have much of a choice. And as for pop-up rates, if you have really deep pockets, you know what I'm having in mind over here? Uh, maybe buy a dozen of these. Yeah, a dozen. And then you display them next to each other. You look like that. Oh, Misaka Mikoto clone army we see in the anime. That would be really cool, man. People actually do that with Gunpla, you know? So why not <laughs> to pop-up rates at least? Moving on to the next one by Momogoza. Confirmed Chinese brand and a new brand. Yeah, they are the only ones who can offer 1x6 skill figures at this kind of pricing. At only 6,000 yen, you are getting a 1x6 glowing Succubus Momoko-chan. Uh, November 2024 release. Yeah, just buy it if you are into collecting low-cost figures. Man, <laughs> uh, not necessarily collecting low-cost figures. Like, you want proper skill figures but not price figure level quality. Price competition is all welcome, right? I welcome competition because that is what that will drive down comp uh, drive down prices for us consumers. Yeah, get one. My favorite is still that one by four skill earlier by Bear Panda. That is my absolute favorite low cost figure this week. Moving on to the last four figures. Okay, they are all male characters. The first one over here we have Pokemon Florian with Fue Coco. 
go to Pokemon Art FXJ. Okay, for Pokemon fans, yeah, it is a must have, right? 13,440 yen August release. Hmm. Young boy uh, and nothing much else, right? Hmm. Oh, I love the paintwork on the back here. You see, it is all these small details that I tend to pay attention to besides the face. You know, to me, right, uh, Pokemon designs nowadays, the newer characters compared to the oldest series from 20 years ago, yeah, to me, the character designs can look rather weird. This one included. Moving on to the next one, uh, Dick Star Legends of the Galactic Heroes, Reinhard von Lohengram. Okay, by Dick, D-I-G, Dick. Never heard of them as well. Uh, July release, 8,500 yen. Legend of Galactic Heroes, very familiar. It is very familiar, but I can't recall anything at the moment. This must be a small figure for sure. Maybe just Figma size. Yeah, 18.5. Okay, that is quite a bit taller than the Figma. Not bad, 8,500 yen. Just that... Mm. Wow, <laughs> the hair is really shiny over here. The next male character over here, this is going to be a very popular one by Medicos Entertainment. 1x7 scale Berserk Guts Black Swordsman version. 27,000 yen. Well, male characters, they tend to be taller than female characters. And at 1x7, 27k with that huge sword and that base over there, this is reasonable. Yeah, <laughs> I don't collect figures like this, but... No, Abelsuk is legendary in its own way that even if Medicos Entertainment's quality control is, once again, uh, not very consistent, I don't think anyone would think too much. Like, if they like Berserk, they are going to pre-order this thing. This is worth having for the collectors. And it seems like his left arm is a prosthetic, uh, mechanical, right? Oh, that is cool. That is very nice. If there is one thing I don't like when I look at this figure, maybe it is the lighting problem. It is that the skin area, the face, the right arm over there, the skin is a bit too glossy. It is reflecting light a bit too much or maybe this is just lighting, poor lighting. I'm not too sure. Normally, the skin area of any figure, they are matte coated, right? They are not reflective, but this one is looking a bit too reflective to my liking. I don't really have any other comments that... Yeah, the pose... The pose is lame for sure, but <laughs> other than that, I, I don't have any other comments on this figure. And the last two figures, I'm just covering it just because why not? Uh, Charlie Chaplin. This is not even anime stuff. Okay, uh, by Star Ace Toys, this must be <coughs> licensed resin statue, right? Yeah, should be. Internet is really slow now because it is Lunar New Year. Everyone is online, you know? Yeah, everyone's playing their phone when they're having family reunion dinner. Okay, anyways, this is 68,000 yen for the standard version and deluxe version. 82,000 yen, you're getting those straight lights over there, which I really like. And remember, this is 1x4 scale, so the pricing is somewhat reasonable over here. And that is all for figures on pre-order in HLJ this week. Now we move on to Ninin Game for some exclusive items. Before that, as usual, go and check out those inside edgy figures which I can't share on screen. Yeah. And then moving on to the first one, this is something I can cover because she looks rather normal and I would love to photograph this figure. Yeah, summer dress, right? They are very flexible. You can put the figure anywhere else outdoors, be it in town or at the beach or in a park and the figure would fit right in, you know? It won't look out of place. Okay, so this is an original character, Windblown Astarote, 1x4 scale at 28,000 yen. Typical b full Forts Japan, and you can go for a cheaper version at 18,000 yen, 1x6 scale, right? Is this edgy figure doesn't look like it to me? Oh, I never knew you could enlarge images at Ninin Game like this. <laughs> I never knew. This is my first time clicking on this by accident. Yeah, this is, this is not an edgy figure, but... Hey, it doesn't matter. This is pretty, right? Of course, <laughs> pre-order it at your own risk. <laughs> and the next one over here. Okay, this one is not yet on pre-order actually. Maybe next week or even tomorrow. I'm recording this a bit early, you see. Okay, uh, original character Long Xiaolong, 1x7 skill, Happy Year of the Dragon version. Okay, so this year, year 2024, going by the Chinese Zodiac, it is Year of the Dragon. But... 
this would be releasing half a year later or longer than that. So by the time the figure is out, I think Year of Dragon is over. Well, technically not yet over if this comes out on time in October 2024, right? Okay, uh, Animaster and their low-cost figures, not as cheap as Bear Panda, but still relatively cheap. This is about 15,000 yen. Oh, I think this is a new feature in Ninin game. Before this, I could not scroll the image and large this way. And I really welcome this, man. This is so much better for me to go through the images. Ah, dim sum. Of course, if you carry your dim sum carelessly like this in a restaurant, you'll be fired. <laughs> yeah, really nice looking figure for under 15,000 yen. I love it. And up next, we stop by Ami Ami for exclusives. Now, here we go again, Fats Company and their FGO exclusives, which I really hate, but there's nothing you can do about it. I'll wait until after release, of course, because this figure of Sei Shonagon from FGO Fate Grand Order is almost 28,000 yen, and this is a very simple figure, as you can see. Like, hey, this is typical Asian tourist pose when you ask them to pose for photos, like that. Yeah, typical. <laughs> You know, when you don't have any ideas how to pose for a photograph, you pose with this peace sign, Asian girls do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is way too simple as a figure to cost 28,000 yen. The reason why Fats Company is overpricing this and making it an exclusive is really obvious. There are no competitors. There are no Sei Shonagon skill figures out there. There is a price figure, a really crappy one. I have it on my shelf, I think. Mm, yeah, there we go. Right, I have the price figure over here. It is very average because it is a Sega price and... Is it Sega? I don't even remember if that was a Furu or Sega. But anyways, that is not a good figure. Very average, below average even. So, if you want something better, this is your only option. I'm sure Furu, uh, I mean Fats Company knows that. So, they are pricing this really high. But I am not taking the bait. I'm waiting until, until after release... And I will look for bargains, right? To me, exclusivity doesn't mean anything. And man, <laughs> she really cares about her fashion. She has a Gucci bag or something around <laughs> her waist. Same thing with the price figure over there. Where are the sunglasses? Yeah, it is there. <laughs> it is there. <laughs> like, she has really weird fashion sense. <laughs> and if you think Sei Shonagon's pricing was bad enough, here we have something worse, Alter's Avenger. Jan Diak Alter at 1x7 skill, 37,200 yen. Ami Ami exclusive. Oh. Why why are you guys doing this to us FGO collectors, man? Why are the figure brands doing this? This is... I mean, I can justify the price if this was 1x6 skill. This is 1x7. And for a sitting post figure like this, which isn't a very big figure, this is not justifiable at all. And... The worst part, the absolute worst part is that Jen Diak Alter is like top 5, the most popular servant in the entire FGO universe in Japan. That regardless of the pricing over here, this thing is going to become very rare and expensive after release, right? It happened to the original Jen Diak Alter by Alter, which I also own one, never reviewed it on this channel. I own that figure. It became really rare and expensive and Alter had to re-release it. And now it is a bit more common you can get that for a normal price, right? And between this version and the, the other Alter version, I would rather you get the older version, right? The re-release has fixed all of the major issues that affected the initial release from many years ago. Get the other one where she is standing with a huge flag. That is a way better purchase. And ironically, that older version is way cheaper than this one and comes with a flag. This one, I can justify this buying this one for maybe 25,000 yen. Yeah, I'm stingy, I know. From 37,000 yen, I'm asking for 25,000 yen for me to buy one, for me to consider it. Because there are way less stuff going on in this version while costing 50% more. This is absurd. The paintwork is outstanding, like the shading paintwork on armor. I won't deny that looks incredible. And even the face expression on this Gen Diak Alter, I would say it is slightly better than the older version, but not worth it. This is just so not worth it, man. Moving on to the next Ami Ami exclusive, we have Tai Tai original character Gen Yu, 1x6 skill by Solar Rain, 22,000 yen. 
You see, there has been so many Chinese outfit figures that I am starting to get sick of them, just like bunny girls. But this one is something special. This is what I'm looking for. Like, if a figure is a bit too common, I mean the theme at least, the outfit, give me something no one else has ever done before. This is one of them. Doing calligraphy with your feet. This is, this is amazing for 22,000 yen. And if you are an original uh, character collector when it comes to anime figures, go for it. Moving on to the next exclusive item on Ami Ami, we have the Z12SX. Is that the name of the <laughs> artist? Tatsuzaki Ryo 1x6 Skill by Test, T-E-S-T. Yeah, this is a brand I've come across the name several times, Japanese brand. And this one going for 40,000 yen, what do you think? I suspect that this figure is ultra exclusive because Ami Ami only allows one order per person, per account, right? Oh, it is the year of the dragon, so dragon girl. And just because of that tail over there, they're asking over 40,000 yen for it. Yeah, I mean, regardless of my opinion on this figure, it will become very expensive. I can already tell, right? Because this is, this is something very exclusive. It is more exclusive than a typical Kotobukiya or Aniplex exclusive. Moving on to the next one, exclusives again, Naruto Gales DX, Hinata Hyuga version 4 by Mega House, 44,000 yen, ouch. Uh, how big is this figure? It can't be very big. Mm, height 30 centimeters, width 31. This is a small figure, man. 30 centimeters, including the effect parts. This is somewhere around 1 by 8 only. Yeah. The base right there is adding at least 5 or 6 centimeters of height. Yep. And then the effect part as well. So 30 centimeters. But the figure is no more than 20. Right? If I were to look at the head height less than that, and this is 44,000 yen simply because of the diorama base, which I admit looks amazing, but is this worth 44,000 yen? I'm not too sure. Right? <laughs> it is Mega House, so I am not even surprised one bit. <laughs> Moving on to the next one over here. Oh wow, a set of five figures. Yeah, by Solar Rain. Love Life Superstar by Kakimo version 5 stars of the first generation set edition. Hmm. Wow, 121,000 yen, so it is like 20,000 yen each, right? Uh, wait, 120 divided by 5, more than that. I think each figure is 20 plus thousand yen, okay. So a set of 5 over here, of a Love Life series, which is arguably the one I hate the most. <laughs> Okay, hate is a really strong word. I shouldn't be using it freely. It is more like the series I dislike the most. Like, the character design is a huge step backwards, at least to me. It is not as attractive as the previous Love Life series, be it the original one or even Equals, right? Yeah. I never liked the character designs on this. And you know the hairstyle on this pink color girl? It almost looks like that bold haircut, except you have these extra bits coming down over here. Yeah, I just... I just don't like the character designs in this series, man. But it is nice that you get to purchase one set in one go, and you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, collecting one figure one year. This is the biggest problem with collecting anime figures in general is that when figure companies release one or two characters a year and if there are eight or nine characters, you will be spending at least five years collecting the whole set and you will never know if the figure company will even complete making the entire set. Max Factories to Love Go, uh, Bright series, right? The Laundry Bright series is an excellent example. One or two characters left, Yami is missing, they never made the figure. Amakuni's Harem Gold series, same problem. There are so many characters in the series, they made like four or five characters and then they stopped right there. So, to get the entire set like this in one go, I wish that figure companies would do it this way. Yes, the initial cost is very high, but at least you're guaranteed to get the entire set. This should be the way to go. Of course, you can pre-order them separately for 24,000 yen each, but I would say go for the entire set because if you collect Love Life, you will want every character, right? Unless you are focused on that one or two character which is your favorite and you don't care for the rest. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Okay, uh, the one thing I've noticed, right, is 
HLJ is very slow in posting anime figures from Kadokawa, uh, Glenel, and a number of other Chinese brands. I'm beginning to see a, a pattern over here. So I'm suspecting that maybe HLJ has issues with getting a supplier for Kadokawa stuff and a few select Chinese brands, right? They will post it maybe next week, but this one is not an exclusive in any way. It is Luna New Year, so a lot of Chinese dress this week. Uh, we have Emilia by Kitty Call. This is almost 24,000 yen coming out this July, which is really fast. <laughs> Just a Luna New Year version. So they expect you to pre-order a Luna New Year figure, and then it will come out six months later, and then... Yeah, you get my points over here, right? Uh, CNY is way over by then. <laughs> it feels like they are rehashing an older figure of Diaz, which has a very similar setup. Yeah, Ram is together with her as a pair, interestingly, but not Ram. Somehow, I have no idea why. Uh, Ram is also on pre-order right here, and she is sitting on the desk. I don't like the face on this ram. I think something looks a bit off over here. I'm not sure how to describe it. Man, this is so CNY. Maybe it is just me not liking the fact that this is so out of character for a ram, right? I've complained about this too frequently already. I don't want to repeat it too much. Hmm. Of course, they keep making V0 figures because they sell. People will still buy it. Moving on to the next one also by Kadokawa and not yet on... <laughs> Uh, HLJ. Uh, interestingly, this is an arms note figure. I thought Amakoni is the one making a lot of arms note figures, but Kadokawa is jumping in as well. Powered Bunny Light Armor version, 24,200 yen after a discount. Significant discount over there, 27,000 yen originally. Okay, uh, this one is coming out in December. I have always been a fan of arms note characters like Bunny Girls or Swimsuit Girls with firearms, right? I love them. It is such an unfortunate thing that you just can't buy everything you want. Even if you had the money, you wouldn't have the space for that. I love it. I love this figure, man. That object behind her, I have no idea what is that, but it looks so cool. Let's hope it is not for scoliosis, which is a deformed backbone. Something you get since childbirth, right? Uh, it happens to some people. Moving on to the next one by Claynell. Claynell is a part of Kadokawa. I think it is Kadokawa plus, was it Charaani or Revolve? Either one. I can't remember anymore. Okay, from Likoris Recoil, I'm really anticipating season 2. I'm excited for S2, man. Chisato Nishikigi Hawaii version. This is the outfit you see her wearing at the last episode, where she is having a vacation in Hawaii after all of the BS she went through on the Tokyo Tower during the climax episode. Yeah, this is really nice. Like there are no other no other Chisato figures in this outfit. So maybe pick one up if you like her in this design. Uh this is certainly something a bit different, right? Compared to other Chisato figures out there. And the next one, of course, her, her partner, Takina Inoue. From Kleenel as well. Only 17,000 yen, man. That is a simple yet attractive base. This is what I want to see from figure brands, right? Of course, if you buy Chisato, you'll want Takina in a way. They are like partners in crime, you know. They work together. And it is only a pair of figures for 34, 35,000 yen anyway. Go for both. If you love <laughs> the Chorus Recoil, I certainly loved the anime, man. It exceeded my expectations. If you have not watched it yet, please watch it. You won't regret it. Moving on to the next one. I think I've complained about this figure of Albedo five times in the past. My Wonder Festival coverage, for example, Mega Hobby Expo as well. By Clinel again, Albedo lingerie version. 25,000 yen. Uh, yeah, like, her legs are too skinny. Same comment as my previous five times I saw the figure when she was still unpainted back then. I'm a big fan of uh, slim legs. I love slim legs, right? I like Hatsune Miku's legs, for example. However... I don't think Albedo's legs are that slim. That, that is the thing. Uh, other than that, yeah, this figure looks really weird from some angles. This angle looks really weird. <laughs> uh, what else? This angle is even weirder. I think that Good Smile version is a better buy overall. Like, Claynell really picked the wrong timing to put this figure on pre-order and they have to pit this one against the Good Smile version. 
To Claynell's credit though, this outfit is a lot more detailed. Like the Good Smile version was all black. Now this white and gold outfit is quite attractive. So which one would you go for? The next one over here for Japan original character Nagisa. I can show her on screen simply because I can. Uh, however, I am not going to scroll through <laughs> the pictures because the lower half of the figure is a completely different story altogether. Well, for original character design, this is also a bit too tame or too plain to my liking. Yeah, just personal stuff. Uh, it is quite weird that this one has only 1x6 skill. There are no separate options for 1x4, which is what they normally do. Or maybe it is just that Ninin Game has not posted the listing yet. That is also a possibility. There will be a 1x4 version of this one. Hmm. I don't have much comments on this figure otherwise. Like This is quite generic looking to me. And that is all for genuine figures this week. Uh, for third parties, now we move on to Oz GK. For the figures I'm about to cover, there are affiliate pre-order links down in the descriptions below. Make use of them if you're interested in any of these figures, right? We have way lesser resin figures this week because, yeah, as mentioned in the starting part of this video, many Chinese employees have started to take holidays. Yeah, to travel back to their hometown for Lunar New Year. So things are slowing down quite a bit, but we have... Two or three really attractive figures for this week, regardless. The first one over here, I would say this is the highlight of this week, actually. Dodomo Studio 1x6 scale fern from So So No Free Run, right? And the pricing is really weird on this one. I just don't understand uh, why this is the case. I'm not sure if there is an error. Okay, uh, the full price for the standard version where you're getting one figure and two head sculpts, two different face plates is... $278 but the deluxe version where you're getting uh, all the cast off parts, two separate bodies, two entire figures is cheaper at $257. I have no idea what is going on. Maybe they mixed up the pricing like they... It should be $257 for the standard and $278 for the DX. I'm not too sure but this is weird. At the same time, if you pre-ordered the DX version and then you were told later, uh, we apologize because the pricing is wrong. This is 278, not 257. I wouldn't be too surprised, right? Yeah, be prepared to pay 278 for this thing. And it's not a big difference anyway, just $20 difference. Go for the DX version and you're getting two entire figures, right? One Hadaka version, which is best value over here. Now we shall go through the pictures over here. Yeah. Dodomo Studio, they are really good at making people want their figures, you see. They keep up with trends in anime, in games even. And you know, uh, this face expression where Fern, is, Fern was pouting her face in the anime, I've forgotten which episode, this face expression became a meme. And guess what? Let's do a figure of Fern with this face paint. You'll see if there is one thing Dodomo Studio is really good at, it is making people want their figures. Their marketing at least is top notch. Okay, they are always... If there is one thing Dodomo Studio is really good at, it is marketing. They are good at making people want their figures. They are keeping in touch. They are keeping track of the latest trends with anime, memes even. So this face expression of her, where she is pouting, I have forgotten which episode. I have not caught up to the latest episode yet. It was a meme on the internet. It was really popular. Right? Everyone is making memes of this pouting face expression. And guess what? Let's include this face expression in the figure. And people are going to be queuing up for this figure just for this face expression, which I doubt that the genuine figure brands would do it. Yeah, this one over here. <laughs> to me, the face is a bit too rounded, like a bit too fat in a way, a bit too rounded. But this is a pouting face expression. Maybe it is supposed to look like that. And if I were to display this figure, of course, I would display it with this face expression. Uh, yeah, maybe go for the deluxe version and display one hit on each, right? To me, this is a must-have for fans of the anime simply because there are no genuine figure brands out there that will give you something like this, be it the extreme fan service, including Hadaka parts, or even the pouting face expression, right? Yeah, the pouting face expression has a higher likelihood. Maybe some genuine brands might do it, but 
this kind of fan service, if you are into this kind of figures, then yeah, this is a must have to me. Moving on to the next figure over here, this is like, why? <laughs> I have no idea what they were thinking. ZH Studio, uh, Chainsaw Man, and yeah. <laughs> Very interesting crossover over here for $100. And I think this is all the picture we need. Are we getting a second hit scout where we get the mask removed? I don't think so. I'm not sure because there are no pictures of her without the mask taken off. But I wouldn't expect any. But this is a really weird combination. <laughs> weird or interesting depending on the perspective. Moving on to the next one, we have QD Studio Genshin Impact Summer Festival Yoimiya. You see, I like this figure quite a bit. There are not many uh, good Yoimiya figures out there, good looking ones, right? At the same time, this figure feels a bit weird to me. Like, maybe because I was influenced by Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. $239 is really, I uh, mean, a good price, a reasonable price, given that you're getting an entire fish. I think that's a koi fish. <laughs> She is riding on, but because I've seen all these creepy fish flying around in Demon Slayer, you know, Gyako, that demon. Yeah, when I look at that fish, I think I'm having more of a negative impression or negative imagination of <laughs> what could go wrong with the fish over there. Yeah, this is very nice, man. Should you pre-order it if you like her? Yes, it is a yes, right? Just that, <laughs> yeah, the fish gives me all these weird imaginations thanks to Demon Slayer. <laughs> Moving on to the next one from your whole studio, we have Jing Liu from Honkai Star Wheel. Okay, the press is not yet confirmed on this one. This is an early bird pre-order and I think this is the only picture we are getting. Of course, there will be Hadaka version. Pretty much confirmed at this point. I'm not a fan of it, right? I'm not a fan of this one. Uh... If you are buying your 4th or your 5th Jing Liu figure, then feel free to go for fan service stuff like this. But I would rather have her with a sword or something. Yeah, something that feels more game-like, right? This is just fan service for the sake of it, you know? Moving on to the next one. Oh, wow. Uh, Galaxy Studio Demon Slayer Kanroji Mitsui for... Okay, 2 skills over here. 1 by 7 skill, $198. But I would say 1x4 skill is the better value, $310, right? Fan service version, okay. Uh, now for this figure over here, the thing is the face. What do you think about the face? I think this is a bit different from what we know in the anime. I don't even remember anymore. I watched the anime quite a while ago. Uh, different, maybe. Is it bad looking? I don't think so. I think the face looks quite nice, right? Yeah. Hmm... So once again, this is also a fan service figure. Uh, it shouldn't be your first figure of Mitsui, but if you're buying multiple figures of her and you want something a bit more spicy, then yeah, sure, go for this one, right? Moving on to the next one. This is the main highlight this week. Yeah, a bigger highlight than that fern figure earlier. Uh, Try Eagles Studio, licensed resin figure, right? This is genuine figure. Rapi from Goddess of Victory Nikkei. And this is going for $667 at 1x4 skill. Yeah, they also made a figure of Alice at this skill. Also around the same price. I think it should be out by now. Should you buy it? Yeah, if you have that kind of money, go for it. This is a licensed figure. Which means it is a genuine figure, right? And with licensed figure brands, they are very consistent in terms of quality control and everything. So you should feel rest assured when you're going for a brand like Tri Eagle Studio, right? I would love to see more pictures, but these pictures are already showing us a lot of nice details already. Yeah. Oh, I love girls with guns. <laughs> I would totally buy one if I have $700, $800 lying around. Yes, I would to totally buy this one. Just that this kind of money, $800, I could spend the same amount on a camera lens. Full frame camera lens. So it is really hard for me to justify that kind of money for a statue like this. Of course, if it was disposable income, like I have no idea what to do with this leftover money, I wouldn't think twice on buying something like this. Moving on to the next one from Niren Studio, we have Himeno from Chainsaw Man. Okay. So the standard version is only $192. Yeah, this one over here where you're getting figure and base only. The deluxe version is $456 because you're getting this entire thing. Yeah, you're paying more for the base. 
So whether you can justify it or not, that is up to you. Himeno is a bit underrated as a Chainsaw Man character, right? There are not many figures of her. I mean, are there even any genuine skill figures of her? I can't remember at all. Uh, pop up rate, yes, for sure. But skill figures, I can't remember, man. Maybe there is one or two of them, not many. Mm. Do you prefer her with long hair or short hair? I still prefer her with short hair, I think. Because she is a bit tomboyish, so I think short hair fits her better. Good to have options though. Next one over here from QD Studio, we have a cute version of Shen He for $100. This is quite tall, I think. Bigger than Nandoroids. Uh, what is the height? 16 centimeters, yeah. Taller than Nandoroids. Hmm. I actually like that Sangonomiya figure uh, from last week. I covered last week. That was a lot nicer. Shen He is a bit too poker-faced on this one. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Not for this version at least. Next one over here, we have another figure of Free Run by Oz Collectibles, right? Is this Oz GK their own original brand? I'm not too sure. I'm not sure. Okay, I've never heard of this brand before. Uh... 118 US dollars, but this is 1 by 7 skill or 1 by 8. Uh, let's see. This is 1 by 8 skill only, 19 centimeters. So it is interesting that they are able to make 1 by 8 skill with resin. Wouldn't that be too fragile? I'm not too sure. You see, most resin figures are 1 by 6 or larger because resin don't hold up very well when they are too thin or too small. The parts are too small, right? Yeah, they tend to break very easily, which is why you don't see 1 by 8 or 1 by 7 scale resin figures very frequently. Maybe this is not 100% resin figure. They are mixing in some other materials, right? Like, for example, if you go for ABS resin, which I use in 3D printing, by the way, ABS resin is tougher and it can withstand impact better. It tends to break less often, but at the same time, it is also a lot more expensive, right? We can only speculate the material being used in this figure at this point. We don't know for sure. Moving on to the next figure, we have Nami from One Piece by GG Studio. This is 1x6 skill, only $131. Yeah, One Piece stuff are always so cheap, man. Hmm. Only two pictures. Come on, man. Give us close-up pictures. Okay, uh, I don't expect them to mess up the face over here. I love the colors though. Very bright, very vibrant. Moving on to the next one. Okay, Boa Hancock from One Piece. We have at least one Boa Hancock every week. Okay, this is by Zoban Studio. Okay, this is not cheap. One by six skill alone over $400, right? Not surprising given you're getting the entire serpent over here and the huge base. Okay, uh, 1 by 6 skill traditional version as they call it over here, $453 at 1 by 4 skill, $739. And then there's a second version B. Oh, wow, very nice color scheme. Yeah, this is not what Boa Hancock looks like normally, but that is very nice color scheme. Uh, yeah, the pricing is the same, just different colors. Let's have a look over here. No, for once, I would go for the weird color version, the white color version, because it looks so different from the rest. Hmm. <laughs> looks really good in these product pictures. We'll have to see what the final product is like. Though, I wanted to say it is very unlikely for third parties to mess up the face of One Piece characters because they are just so experienced at making these figures from this series, yet at the same time, there has been two or three figure brands that actually messed up figures of One Piece somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, so there is no guarantee sometimes. And the last figure for today, something cultured. <laughs> from Starry Sky Studio, we have Genshin Impact Shen He. Okay, uh, $290 for 1x4 skill. 1x7 is $180. And of course, I am not going to scroll through the pictures. Like, what kind of pose is this? Reminds me of this anime. I can't remember the title anymore where they were crawling over <laughs> the, the place. It was hilarious. Yeah, uh, and this pose reminds me of that. Like, what? The very same brand which made that uh, Ganyo bow figure. If you get what I mean, right? I'm not putting that picture on screen. 
<laughs> this uh, studio has a history of making really weird figures of Genshin Impact, but they do a great job. Like the face is always as promised by the product pictures. So if you were to ask me, should I go for this one because I like it? Yeah, by all means, go ahead, right? They have released uh, two weird figures from Genshin Impact. I think it was Ganyu and the other one was Yoimi. Yeah? They turned out really good, right? So, yeah, I wouldn't expect it to be any different for this figure of Shenhe. And that is all for figures on pre-order this week. Which one will look pre-order? Let me know down in the comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for weekly anime figure content. Until then, I'll see you guys again really soon. Goodbye.